Paula Barbie here. I just wanted to ask, I have currently been single for the longest I probably have um, in my sort of dating life. And honestly, I have never felt less alone. I know what it's like to feel alone in a crowded room. I did this wonderful painting that you see on my Instagram called Lonely Love. Now basically this was a painting where there was like two trees um, that kind of formed like a love heart and there was a girl hanging on a swing by herself. And I had been in like a long term relationship at the time and I felt like I was alone. This person really was I think everybody needs to be single at least one in their life, once in their life. I mean be single for as much as of your life as you can i'm 25 years old and i've probably spent the last 10 years of my life in relationships i mean think about that i give everything to the people that i care about i will do anything for them i will do anything to make them happy all i ever do all day every day is think about them think about ways i can accommodate them think about things that i could do for them being considerate of them wondering what that what it is that they're doing texting them calling them or just generally without any physical contact or external contact they are always on my mind constantly like it's an obsession and i just look back and think how much time did i really waste on those people how much time did i waste that i could have really been investing in myself and time invested in yourself is never never lost and I think a lot of us feel like nobody kind of knows who we are. And I mean, I don't even know who I am. And I'm figuring out that. And that's fine. You know, when people ask me what I want to be, I simply say I want to be the most important thing a person can be. And that's myself. And I'm still figuring out that who is who that is. Um, I've learned a lot of lessons in my life about relationships. I've learned a lot of like what I don't want um, in a relationship. I've learned about what I need as a person in a relationship. And I think getting to know that was vitally important because my needs are different to everyone else's as, as all of our needs are. Some of them might be similar, um, particularly as a borderline. I might have some really pressing, bizarre, peculiar needs. Um, and I need to know what they are so that I can communicate them to someone else. And I think what you need in life really does have this ability to control you. And I realized what I needed more than anything was to build myself up. And it wasn't that I wasn't trying to build myself up before. I was just surrounded by people who were constantly tearing me down. I had this borderline attachment to people. Like people had control over me. People have control over me and fighting to get that control back, I guess, was a losing battle that I tried to fight for so many years. And now I, I just accept that people have this control over me and what I, what I do, how I live with that is go, okay, if people have this control over me, then I need to make sure that people who are going to use that power um and bring negativity into my life and mistreat me and 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 make me feel bad then they don't deserve to be a part of my life so i push all of those people out and i guess that was like step one of my recovery journey with borderline but this year what i've really learned as well is that if people have this power over you some people can actually have a really positive influence on you some people can empower you some people can build you up some people can be really good for you yeah sure they were few and and like far between but when you stop trying to prove your worth to people who can't see it then suddenly you might have your blinkers off that tunnel vision will be gone and you can kind of see the world for the first time and realize how many people have been standing around in your peripherals who do accept you for who you are, who do actually see your worth. And surrounding yourself with people who see your worth is vitally important in learning how to see your own worth. I mean, external validation is kind of the stepping stone to internal validation, which is ultimately our goal. That's what I want. I want to value myself. I want to feel like a good person. 
I want to be an independent, strong person in control of my life, making choices that I want to make. I'm sick of being a chameleon. I am absolutely sick of just being whoever, you know, someone wants me to be or who I think they want me to be because I am so desperate for acceptance. I mean, the thing is, like, nobody can reject you if you don't want to be accepted in the first place. So once I kind of wrapped my head around that and went, you know what? Reject me if you want. Everyone can reject me. Because they kind of were anyway. And once I went, okay, I'm okay with that. Because I'm exhausted of this. I'm exhausted of pretending. I'm exhausted of trying to be someone that I'm not. And I actually started being me. And then I realized how many people really actually loved me for who I was. How many more people I connected with on really like an emotional and genuinely, you know, honest way. And that's what fulfills me as a person. That's what makes me happy. And so much of my life has been taken away by mental illness, by relationships. And I just think what I want more than anything right now is to work on myself. And that's not just about getting a level of functioning back so I can work, so I can finally get stable accommodation, so I can do all of these things. But it's really been, I guess, like an inner journey for me as well. Learning to love myself. And I wouldn't honestly say I'm there yet, but I'm okay with who I am. And it doesn't affect me as much when people tell me that there's something wrong with me. I mean, people still tell me that every day. People laugh at me. People laugh at my hopes and dreams. And I guess it's one of those things when people say to me, Oh my God, you actually think you're going to do that? Ha 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 ha. It's like, no, I know I'm going to do that. Because I'm going to make it happen. Whenever someone tells me that I can't do something, I honestly consider it my duty to prove them wrong. And if that's the way that I interact with the outside world, then I really think I need to adopt that same attitude towards myself. When I'm hating on myself, when I'm telling myself, you know, you can't do this, you're not good enough. I need to start thinking positively about that, flipping it on its head and go, you know what? You know what, other half of me? I actually can do this and I'm going to prove to you that I can do this. It's not about proving this to anyone else in the world. It's about proving it to myself. It's about, you know, I don't know. I just look like at this split version of myself and I look at it like the abusive partners that I've had in the past. The trouble is if you're stuck in an abusive relationship with yourself, then guess what? You can't leave. You don't have that option. So you're going to have to go to counselling. You're going to have to sit down and have a chat with yourself and work on it every single day for the rest of your life. So just think about that, guys. Think about the relationship that you have with yourself. Because if you don't have a stable relationship with yourself, then you're not going to have a stable relationship with anyone else. If what you need is love, if what you are yearning for is connection, um, self-esteem, like whatever it is, those things that you need, you will not find in another person. They might temporarily fill that gap, but you know what? I can't take happiness from you and put that happiness within me. I have to find happiness within myself because it's, it's an emotion. External possessions, people can't actually fill holes in you as a person. Holes that you have probably been burning into yourself for like a really long time. I remember after my last relationship that I had had this pattern of basically where I had gone from one person to another for feeling, um, you know, this void in my life to kind of patch up the pieces of me that were missing from the last time someone destroyed me. The trouble is the next relationship I got into basically just took more than I even had to begin with. So after that last horrific breakup, I was sitting there and I honestly felt like a skeleton. I felt like every single part of me had been ripped off and I was just so broken and fragile. And I realized my greatest mistake there was that I had lost every part of myself. I had given away every single part of myself. 
and that is what made me committed to where I am now in life to work on myself to build myself back up again because being in that state I was completely suicidal like I couldn't even have the energy to stand up I didn't have the energy to live anymore because I had nothing to live for and since then it's been my quest to find something to live for to get to value myself um, and to work on that relationship with myself technically yes I don't have a boyfriend but I don't say to people that I'm single because I am in a very committed relationship to myself I am currently in a very healthy relationship with myself because I refuse to be in, in an abusive relationship with myself um,